Awesome. So thanks and welcome um, to our webinar call. And our goal today is really to show you what we mean by BI with the brain. What are the necessary components that you actually can see and, and seek from a solution uh, with the brain? And we'll get into sort of how ClearStory helps enable uh, some of the capabilities. And of course, we are going to show you a live product. And, and I so let me, uh, with that start, um, why BI with the brain? I think, you know, most of you today have used um, a set of or maybe combination of different variety of traditional BI tools. Traditional BI was invented to really leverage, you know, your data as a way to then turn into reports and to do decision support in your or complex enterprise. Um, but traditional BI had a lot of assumptions about the data. Back then, I'm talking about 15, 20 years ago, data was not as complex as today. There was no explosion of data. There was just basic internal data sets that companies used for reporting, and they wanted to use standard reports to be able to then, you know, understand how their business was uh, doing you know, on a regular basis. Um, so a lot of these tools were built with that requirement in mind. When you fast forward to today, when you look at the explosion of data from a variety of sources, not just internal, but also from external, when you look at data coming in different formats, when you look at data coming in different frequencies, and we look at data complexity uh, that has exploded in terms of the way data is shaped and structured, a lot of those tools are just not able to cope with that complexity. So that's the you know, number one problem. Number two is companies dedicated a lot of teams, different teams, to wrangle this data, right? And they continue to do that today. Um, and I think at the end of the day, when you look at the amount of resources being drained, just being able to, you know, connect and bring together data and wrangle the data to prepare for analytics and reporting, again, it's not um, possible or feasible to do this in a timely manner. So there's a lot of slowdowns and drain of resources that have been happening especially when you're looking for technical data experts and IT resources being you know, used for this purpose. And then last but not least, sorry, why traditional BI is not viable as, a, as for today's complexity and speed is I think is, is the latter word speed. I think most companies realize they don't need data just for regular reporting anymore, but they need data every day. They need data every hour to be able to impact their business decisions along the, along the way. Uh, this could be related to your plant production. This could be related to your customer you know, service. This could be related to your sales. This could be related to a marketing campaign. And you don't have a lot of time to react, to be able to then go in and, and understand what's going on and then be able to make a decision in a timely fashion. So with all these three issues combined, traditional BI has now become an obstacle to understanding and advancing your business insights. So that's why I think from our perspective, what's the alternative, right? You can ask yourself, what is the alternative? There is an alternative out there. And that's why I think where the BI with the brain concept comes into play. Really what BI with the brain for us is really the definition of a, an artificially intelligent machine powered BI solutions. Why is it important to have that machine as part of the, the brain, right? As, as forming that brain of a BI solution. Well, there are two main purposes, right? In this case, um, imagine a system where this machine learning and artificial intelligence becomes the brain of such a system, right? And imagine there are two purposes of this brain, right? One purpose is the brain has to read all your data, has to profile, has to understand its meaning, and then basically automate that whole wrangling process, right? Can you go from reading a file and understanding all the context around the, the different, uh, you know, syntax and the taxonomy and understand the usage of that data, what is it being used for? And then basically then pr prepare a profile of that data so that different users with different use case needs can use and leverage that data. So that's the first step is, is the brain has to function as sort of like orchestrating this need to connect, access, pro profile, and prepare wrangle data for usage by the rest of the organization. So that's the first piece. The second part here on the, on the you know, AI-powered BI solution is then the same brain now has to also then interact with a whole bunch of users. Because now 
it's not only necessary for organizations to send reports to only three people. Everybody in the organization needs data. Everybody in the organization needs those insights, especially the front office. When you have sales, marketing, field reps, field service agents, um, anyone out there, the plants, you know, on the supply chain side, your distributor, your deliveries, everybody in the field needs some kind of data and some kind of insight, depending on their use case. So from my perspective, you know, the machine and the brain has to also act in unison with the rest of the data to then serve up those insights in a very easy to consume, uh, discoverable fashion. So let's dig into that a little bit more and, and understand what are some of those pieces. So if you look at the the, the bottom part, so again, I'll start with the overall project. The role of AI, this brain, you know, how does it go and understand all the data, right? So think about the data tasks that organizations have to do today. You know, when you connect to a database, again, in the, in the traditional world, you have to understand, first of all, what's in that data. You have to reconcile that data with where you're coming from, where it's sourced, and where you're going to put it into what's the target. You have to do some transformations in this data, right? You have to be able to understand what transformations are necessary to then prepare for the rest of the um, for the rest of the use cases. In some cases, you have to enrich that data, right? That data needs to be enriched with additional elements or additional data sets, right? What are they? And again, they could be very different from context to context, from from use case to use case. And of course, there's a lot of things around creating a metadata so that you know what's in that data set. And of course, the data discovery and the data interpretation, it becomes a key part of this overall process. Again, this is not served in the traditional BI world. You know, these are all distinct manual steps that are done by possibly different groups. So they are very disconnected. And at the end, they create a lot of silos for, for a lot of organizations. So in an AI kind of world, in a machine-driven world, this machine basically takes care of the reconciliation piece transformation piece, again, working with the human impact and interaction. So one of the things that to realize that humans are not um, completely uh, wiped out of this picture. There's always that human interaction that's playing, but the machine is doing majority of this data automation tasks, right? From data transformation, from enrichment, to metadata, to understanding the discovery part of the data itself. And of course, being able to um, interpret data on a continuous basis. A key word I want to emphasize here is the continuous piece, because one of the things that also AI doesn't assume, which in the traditional BI world was an assumption, is that data is static, right? In this case, data and every piece of that data is actually dynamic. It's changing, it's updating, it's being deleted, it's being added something else, you know, the schema changes. So in that changing, fast changing world, the word continuous takes on a very important meaning. And what I mean by that is that every time there's a new piece of data that's come in or, or the users have stumbled upon a new data set, that has to be put into context with the rest of the data that you have, right? And so this is, again, where the machine can help the humans, you know, put it through the same process right away, whatever that new data set or new data element is, but then tell you how it's related to the rest of the context of the data that you have in the system. And again, to that extent, what needs to happen, and again, the brain part of this BI solution takes care of this, is scoring that data for relevancy. Once you interpret the data, and once you bring that data together, that relevancy becomes important because depending on the use case and the user's motivations, those data sets take on different meanings. And again, those meanings are not assumed. It could change from day to day, it could change from use case to use case, it could change from different groups to different groups within the organization. So here again, it becomes very important for the brain to constantly keep scoring the relevancy. Again, the, you know, with the purpose of how to best put these data sets together so you can then you know, do your analysis in your BI solution. And in order to help you with that scoring, the machine also should be able to tell you how the blended data sets and how those data sets that are relevant to each other are actually relevant in terms of their dimensions, in terms of their attributes, right? So what are those correlation factors? What are the histograms? How are those data sets distributed among themselves, but also with relation to each other? So this is, again, where that relevancy detection becomes critical in a continuous world. So as those data sets you know, update and change, this relevancy detection also 
adapts and changes along the way. So these scores, imagine the machine keeps track of these scores, but also presents you a new score every time something changes. And of course, with you know, again, those two parts are still not enough because at the end of the day, the business is what needs to you know uncover those insights to be able to make those you know immediate decisions regarding their line of business, regarding their customers, regarding their suppliers or distributors. So again, in this case, the what we find is the AI-driven uh, data interpretation. Um, helps uncover these insights through a, a way of you know multiple kind of capabilities coming together right we have some capabilities out there with tools where they actually show narrated you know text around the visualization but again that's not enough right you need some contextual awareness to be able to go there and show the user what what is it that the user is trying to do let's understand their context just like we understand the the profile of the data and what it's used for the machine can now understand the context context of the user. I'm looking at my plant in the southeast uh, part of the country, and I'm looking interested in these product production lines. Right, that's a context, and so the, the machine should be able to know that and be able to then keep that in mind as you're actually discovering and patterns across the the personal relevance to the user and surface up those insights as possible as much as possible. So with that, what does that leave us, right? So in summary, what I'd like to basically uh, have the key takeaways for, for today be basically AI-powered BI with a brain solution has really three components, right, that are critical. And these are not only nice to have, but they're actually table stakes. So from our perspective, right, the first part is as we cover it, how does the machine help you interpret the data continuously, constantly, and at scale? Right? As your data sources increase, as the complexity increases, that interpretation of data, finding meanings, finding patterns, is absolutely critical. And again, this has to be done without manual efforts. If this can be done automa automatically, it helps companies scale very much. The second part of that is scoring that data for relevancy. Just like we talked about it, once you have data sets, how do you then have them relate to each other? What about the relationships between attributes and dimensions? And those data structures could be quite different. Different levels, different structures, different formats. So the whole point is understanding the overall context and then being able to show you the relevancy at any given time. And of course, last but not least, right? How do we then show you the new discoveries or even surprises, right? Things you weren't expecting as a user. How does the machine surface those up on a continuous basis and show you What's interesting? What's what's an anomaly? What is actually you know deserves attention from your perspective? So with those three key steps in mind, we then can show you the reality, right? If you had such a system in place today, how would that look like, right? How would you actually combine all this brains of a system that not only automates data prep but also helps you uncover insights? and then helps you interact with humans and your data analysts and your business analysts along the way, now this becomes actually very important because you are now dipping into the power of the machine, automating and speeding this process up continuously, but taking it to the next level, right? So not only you don't have to put certain analyses together yourself, the machine now starts finding, right? If you're looking at your cost of labor and material and parts by month, the machine is actually looking at it on a day-to-day -day level, right? Even though your visualization doesn't show you that, the machine is listening. And it now says, hey, we noticed that certain actually um, elements actually show spikes on these days. Would you like to see? And, and which ones would you like to see? And all the user has to do is basically, you know, I'm interested in labor and paint. Now let's do, can we explore more, right? Now we can actually get into those days. So the machine now, learns, interacts with the humans, the humans teach the machine what they're interested in. And now the context is actually completed. And so now the machine is now listening for new data in these areas. And now we can actually augment and discover a lot more in this fashion. So this is really an example of a use case where if all of this comes together, now users have so much more power, so much more speed, and so much for ease of use to be able to make those decisions.
So that's really where Twist Story comes in, right? In terms of those components, um, Twist Story is a machine-driven analytics solution, right? And is really tailored for business users. On the on the left hand, what you see is a set of these machine-driven capabilities that take your complex data through a series of heuristics to then infer what's in those data sets, to blend and score relevancy between those data sets, and help you quickly discover the relationships between those attributes across those different data sets. And on the front end, it helps you auto-discover those insights by letting you um, surface up those related insights based on the context of what the user is trying to do. So if you're asking the question why, ClearStory then surfaces up those potential areas of where the answer might lie. And basically, it builds that dynamic, um, what we call sort of auto discovery of insights, to then let you click and drill into those uh, areas quickly and find those insights. And basically, it helps you automate throughout your story, storytelling and storyboard experience. Obviously, there are a lot of companies that are starting to use AI-powered solutions today. And again, we're definitely you know, happy to be part of that trend where you know, having a BI with a brain solution helps power more use cases across a lot of these customers. And you know, with that, I wanted to turn it over to Scott, where now you can see how those elements come together in our solution. And what we're going to walk you through is basically in eight minutes, how do you infer data, blend three sources, and then how do you interact with these auto discovery of insights on the front end? All right, Scott, feel free to take over. Excellent. Thank you for that, Ali. One moment, I'll share my screen. All right, so today, what I want to do, uh, we're going to start with the last topic that uh, Ali mentioned, which is this notion of storyboards and exploring insights there. And then we'll take you back into the story environment where we created all the views that you are looking at uh, in this storyboard environment. Uh, throughout this, I want to try to give you the opportunity to see just how quick it is to, to move through any number of different data sets. Uh, leverage all of the machine generated insights and information around things like the scoring between relationships with different data sets. Uh, but to start with here, I want to walk you through a bit of our storyboard experience. So very much our last mile delivery of mm -hmm. any of these insights out to our customer bases, whether those are internal or external customers, and many of the controls that we would expect them to have with respect to being able to filter uh, the end user experience drive that uh, definition of that filter themselves as an end user, or have, have filters be automatically applied when individual users log in based upon their rights and permissions. And as we expand our frame, storyboard frames, and we move from frame to frame, you'll note that there's a collaboration taking place alongside of each particular frame. Now, this collaboration experience is very contextual in the sense that as any end user has gone in and commented on their particular made a comment, they might have applied a filter, and the data might have changed since they made that comment. By clicking on that comment, we're then brought to the state that that user generated, so we can have a very direct line of sight. Perhaps there's a quick reply to answer that end user's questions, but more likely we need to dig a little bit deeper. So we're going to come back to that uh, concept in here in just a second. Now, the other notion of Explore Insights really takes to hold whenever we think about how, how the machine is aware of all the different data elements that you've brought into the system and how they relate to each other. At this level here at the storyboard, whenever we've produced any certain set of visualizations and insights, we're then allowing the machine to, benefiting from the machine, where it's automatically generating a list of drill paths for us to navigate to other storyboard environments. Here we have three other storyboards, one focused around commodity performance, another on store division performance, and a third on product details. And inside of the first two, storyboards, we have a set of frames where we know that we share data characteristics with this east sales amount region that I've clicked on. So now I want to, for example, drill down from region into division. I can click on that link. We're going to move then from the regional breakout down to the division. 
And now, as I continue to explore my insights, you notice that this list looks a little bit different because we're now looking at a different data characteristic and how it relates to all of its other attributes. I can now move across if I wish to an entire commodity performance storyboard. Now, at the lower level of grain, maybe I'm breaking things out with slightly different visualization choices. So rather than filtering one environment that's a little bit rigid with respect to mm -hmm. the views around it, uh, we want to be able to allow this user to express themselves and continue in a continuous fashion across all of the storyboards that relate to these particular elements. Now, I, I mentioned earlier as we had our comments that there's potential for a deeper exploration into the data. Uh, and how do we do we surface that to these users? So on the top right-hand corner, there's a button called Continue Analysis. It's only available on a permission basis, but for those users that do have that requisite access, when we click Continue Analysis, we move from the storyboard to the story. This is very much our workbench side of the, the solution where we're handling all of the data manipulation, transformation, and preparation tasks to turn the data into a relevant state for then some end user visualization needs. Uh, it's where we accomplish all the things like blending different data sets together. And I want to give you an example of what that looks like today. And I'm going to pull in some of the more granular data that we have in this data set. So we've got a UPC for some point of sales data, looking at total sales. But now I'm going to harmonize in a new data set. And what do I want to bring in? I want to bring in a syndicated data source. Now take note here along the right side that we're scoring all the data sets that we have access to with their potential likelihood of working together with our data sets. So looking for shared characteristics such as date and time, location, and then any category fields. As we then narrow down to our data set of interests, we can start to see that the machine's surfacing up a recommendation of where we should join these two data sets together. And we're not so worried about the field names. So when the field names don't match, but the data matches, ClearStory is going to see that and is going to then reference that and suggest that for you. As I pull in then the syndicated product data set, I can start to add in a new characteristic from this second data set, such as number of stores selling. And I can continue in a continuous fashion of adding more and more data sets into this environment. So I have a SAP margin data set, again, looking for the actual matches at the data level and not the data set, uh, the field names themselves. We add in this third data set. We can then go inspect the joint scenarios that have happened. We see here between cons UPC, scan code, and SKU that the joins have been structured across these three different data sets, which allows us to then continue down the path of working with these data sets together. So if I have our sales amount from our point of sales data set, and then I want to pull in my margin characteristic to get to a gross margin, just a few seconds, we can have that introduced into our visualization here. I want to give it a little pop. We can quickly get to then perhaps another presentation view that we want to publish back out to our storyboard environment. Or amongst a class of users inside of our story environment, if you see the comment thread on the right, you can actually share these views with any number of users. And by clicking on the comments that those users have seeded, we're then brought to the state of the story that they had defined in that moment. So you'll notice here three different data sets. We have some Cantar Media ad spend data, a US Census demographic summary, and then our point of sales data. So a very flexible environment for us to be working through uh, the, the analysis. Now, uh, another aspect of data discovery uh, is one where we can very quickly surface up all of those relationships between all of the fields that are now part of that joint corpus of data. Here, the quick mouse over, you'll see in red indications of the percent makeup of each particular category element, looking at the distinctness and completeness of each of these particular fields helps you to really get a broader understanding of the relationships between all of the many fields that could be involved as we're joining, again, many, many data sets together. So we get down to the fact-based ranges, driving correlations across any one chosen field and all of the remaining fields with a click of the button. And as you start to see perhaps some clustering developing, the bottom right hand a little cluster and the bottom left hand a cluster here, as we click on that particular visualization, we're then brought to the fuller visualization inside of the story environment where we can continue our explanation if we wish to highlight a particular outlier and then continue to narrow our, our search down onto that particular field, add in some more attribution, and really see what's happening with that data point. With that, I want to give it back to Ali 
give you a little summary of what we've just seen. Thank you, Scott. I hope you found that uh, useful. Obviously, there's a lot more um, in terms of what we can do capability-wise, but I think this was just a quick show of how all these elements working together can give you a very simple, fast, and a scalable experience to be able to get insights from complex data sets. And that's really what, what Career Story we would strive to do today, right? Which is really, how does a solution with the brain help you uh, meet the speed of the business with analytics capabilities that are, again, across complex data sources. And it's optimized really for the business user. We don't require a lot of technical uh, help or resources to be part of the solution. And again, it's, it's a way for the business to be able to come in, create, consume those insights uh, across your complex data sources. How do you, you know, work with us? And again, this is sort of my last, uh, slide today is sort of how do we get started? Um, you can actually do uh, one of three ways here, right? You can actually really experience uh, this, you know, on your own data. Um, you know, there's a way to get a preview, what we call data preview. You can actually work with your data in Clear Story. You can actually do a, a custom demonstration for you and for your organization. And of course, you can always get your hands on it and do a more involved uh, trial uh, using your data, but also using your uh, business users as part of the solution itself. So again, I encourage you to reach out to us. Uh, I hope this was uh, useful and uh, we hope to see you in the next uh, webinar.